All right, let's dive into cholecystitis and cholelithiasis. So we're talking about here is the gallbladder. And here is this gallbladder stones or inflamed gallbladder. Real quick AMP. The liver produces bile, which is used for the digestion of fats. And it produces the bile, and then it's moved to the gallbladder. So the gallbladder stores it. Um, this gallbladder then would release the bile, comes down the common bile duct, and here's the pancreas, and the pancreas' enzymes uh, will also be released into the same duct and then goes into the small intestine. So, when we're talking about the gallbladder, uh, gallstones, they can be in the cystic duct themselves, or they can be somewhere here in the common bile duct. If it's somewhere here in the common bile duct, you're going to have problems with the gallbladder, but if it's low enough, it can also have problems with pancreas, problems with the liver. So, you may have pancreatitis and uh, cholecystitis at the same time. So what are some risk factors for developing these gallstones? Uh, I told you that bile is used for digestion of fats. So if you have a case where you have a lot of fats in the diet and the gallbladder is working in overtime, you have an increased risk of developing these gallstones. So increased triglycerides and cholesterol such as found in obesity, uh, high fat diets, and type 1 diabetes, or uh, people that have rapid waste loss, they have lots of fats running around in their, in their blood. Also family history and uh, old age just because there's decreased bowel movement, uh, bowel contractility, um, so it can cause the stones to, to not get pushed out and make them big enough that they'll clot off. So what are some signs and symptoms? So what happens is you have all the bile backing up in the gallbladder is now inflamed and is swollen. You're going to have pain in the right upper quadrant and that pain can radiate to the shoulder. So that's something I like to put on the tests is that uh, the shoulder pain sometimes could be the gallbladder. So we got a couple signs with this, with this pain. So we know it's in the right upper quadrant, can go to the shoulder, increases with food because the uh, gallbladder is trying to digest the food that you ate and then you'll see nausea and vomiting. Um, they'll also have the pain, will have rebound tenderness, it's called Bloomberg sign. And this is to be un done only by physicians just because if it's swollen up, you don't want a nurse coming in and you accidentally pop it and then it's, you're liable for it. Also, you have the Murphy sign, which is another sign that the doctors will use. So Bloomberg's and Murphy's for uh, the gallbladder. Some other signs, you can have fever because there's a lot of uh, inflammation going on in the body. And because you don't ha now you're having problems with the gallbladder, which is also associated with the liver, you can see increased bilirubin. And so you're going to be seeing uh, jaundice, which is yelling in the skin or the eyes. And with that, uh, that's because you have bilirubin uh, depositing itself in the skin. Uh, that bilirubin can also cause pruritus, which is itching of the skin. Uh, you're going to have clay-colored stools and dark urine because you have bilirubin in the stools and in the urine. And you can have staphyria. What this is is fatty stools. And because you're not digesting the fat, so the fat's just making its way straight out of the body. Some labs to see, I told you increased bilirubin. I told you you're going to be having fever because of inflammation in the body. Same thing, increased white blood cell count. And you have increased cholesterol because it's not being digested appropriately. If it's in a point where it's affecting the liver, you may see elevated liver enzymes. If it's to where it's blocking off the pancreas as well and you have pancreatitis with it, you can see some increased pancreatic enzymes, which are the ACEs amylase and lipase, for example. So how do you diagnose it? Well, you look at their history. Do they have uh, risk factors? Do they have these signs and symptoms? And then what they'll do is they'll do a CT, X-ray, MRI something where they can visualize the actual stone itself. Uh, they can also do something called an ERCP, which is they'll do endoscopically, go in and they'll look for any stones or blockages. And at this point, they could remove the stones if they find them. Or a HIDA scan, which is another specific scan for these, the biliary system, which is these three, the liver, gallbladder, and pancreas, to see if they can find any stones or blockages or tumors. Treatment, uh, you can see a closed cystectomy, which is to remove the gallbladder. Uh, this is typically done laparoscopically. It's not really a big deal. They usually discharge within a day. Or they can do an extracorporeal shockwave lithotropy, TRIPSI. What this is, is just like how they can take out uh, kidney stones with shockwave therapy, they might be able to break it up, depending on what the physician believes. You also uh, are going to have this patient MPO, and you're going to be wanting to, so that way the bowel has time to rest, and giving them pain medications in the meantime. And uh, after discharge, if they do have the, pancre uh, the gallbladder removed, you'll need to give them synthetic bile in bile salt form so they can digest their fats. And you'll also want them to be on a low-fat diet after discharge. So that is uh, cholecystitis and cholelithiasis in a nutshell.